Hey everybody, it's Lewis Porter Jr. Of course, it is Monday, March 16th. Another lovely adventures of my lovely video cast slash podcast, Transparency Agenda Daily. Uh, today we're going to talk about Pathfinder. Because I've been doing some research, this goes back to our whole living campaign, but I'm doing some research on just uh, what I've noticed about what people like about playing and stuff like that. So, today, we're going to talk about some Pathfinder stuff in general. So, this won't be another one of those big ranting rants that I do and stuff like that. This is more about understanding the business side and, you know, how it comes to play. So, oh, thank you. Thank you, Dennis, for joining. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, let's talk about, uh, I'll say, living campaigns. Because, you know, that's been in my head of late. That's what I've been focusing on. I'm really... Um, interested and in what people think for adventures and playing because i've noticed this all right so while talking to a lot of people who like gaming or enjoying gaming and really like it a lot it seems like pfs and living city and a lot of the other ones didn't have like the best adventures it seemed like the adventures were kind of like tame and kind of lame and people were not really excited about them hey tracy what's going on um I'm kind of surprised that so many people were like, ah, the adventures aren't that good, but I play them because I get to play in place to place. And that's something that kind of surprised me. That being said, uh, the guys over at Arcanus, um, well, Paradigm Concepts, uh, did their Living Arcanus and it got really good response. A lot of people liked it. And it was really kind of interesting. So I was kind of surprised that so many people uh, accepted doing the kind of not as good living campaigns that could have been. Uh, and this is something, this goes back to another issue of mine I don't understand, especially for adventures. Um, to me, adventures would be serial. That seems that would be the most logical sense thing you do. Why would you not make them serial adventures? Why would you not have them connected? Why not have people play them to an end result? I mean, it's very, you know, it's very standard, I would assume. I'd kind of expect that, but most people are like, no, no, no. You play an adventure, you play it, boom. Move on to the next one. And I was always told the whole mindset of, you know, kill monster, get treasure. So that's kind of the focus of that. So I don't get why people didn't want more. So I, I, I think that's what probably interests me about even talking about PFS. It's like, okay, PFS has a lot of people playing. People are playing big adventures. They're playing for years and years and years. Why aren't they telling, like, longer, more interesting stories? Why aren't there bigger things happening um i'm i guess someone's excited with the horn uh i, I would go with the whole comic book analogy because of course i'm gonna talk about comic books of course it's the sense of if you like reading comics i assume that you want comics to grow building it bigger and actually go somewhere um i guess the modern day comic kind of really doesn't do that but i mean as a kid you know born in the 70s grew up in comic books in the 70s and 80s the story just got bigger, they added on to it, and got more and more. I'm going to go back to probably the most well-known one is uh, X-Men's Dark Phoenix Saga. I mean, it starts out, and we're talking, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back to issue 100. I'll start with the, the Chris Claremont writing, and uh, who's doing the art? No, not Al Milgram. Who's doing the art? I cannot think of who's doing the art here. This is crazy, and I know, I see his face, and I can't think of his name. Jeez, uh, this is, ooh, bad comic book moment. Um, so... Who was doing the art back then? All right. So they introduced the Phoenix in issue 100. She comes out. She's got these new powers. Da, da, da. Everyone gets excited. And it's kind of like a really interesting part. And then eventually uh, issue 108, I believe. My, I still remember. John Byrne jumped on. And that's when the series took a very distinct turn to the legendary series it's always become. I think that Chris Claremont understood, I think better than most people, even at that time, telling long, well-thought-out stories would be helpful to the industry and really for his pockets. And that's, I mean, that's a prime example. I mean, the Dark Phoenix uh, saga runs from issue, well, let's say one issue 100 to issue 138 when it's finally resolved. That's three years later. That's kind of a smart idea. I mean, it's, it's not really overcomplicated. And I mean, let's be honest. If done right, you can drag out things for an appropriate amount of time and get people to the climax or the climax has the great payoff. Because that scene where Cyclops is with uh, uh, the Phoenix on the blue area of the moon, when she basically knows that she's got to commit suicide, is a great moment. It's like she knows she, you know, she killed all those people and she feels all the guilt and they know they can't stop her. So it's like, what the hell are we going to do? 
And, you know, that's, that's a, I mean, that's just, that's, was built, but that's been building up for three years. So you get that payoff. So I think the smart thing would be do the same thing with kind of living campaigns and that kind of stuff. You know, wait, get the good payoff. Boom. Everyone's happy. Everyone talks about it. And, you know, you, you do it kind of Babylon 5 style. I mean, Babylon 5, that first year Babylon 5, if you're not a fan of it, I always say, well, you should watch it. It's a great way how to build a story over time. There's constant little pieces of stuff that's going on. They give you little tiny bits. I mean, like, mm, mm, everywhere to get you along to the bigger story. Season 2, give you more pieces of the bigger story. And, like, the end of Season 2 is where you really start getting to understand what's going on. And I think the people who stayed around got the payoff. The people were just coming in and out and, you know, doing, as I call it, the Star Trek thing. One episode by one episode by one episode. And at the end of the episode, everything goes back to normal. I, I don't like that kind of TV. Well, don't get me wrong. I watch it kind of TV like everybody else. But now I'm not a big fan of it. I think the characters you start with should not be the same characters at the end of it. They should be radically different. They should be, you know, have been through their trials and tribulations. They should be different in every way, shape, and form. I'm just, you know, that's just me. Oh, my connection's getting weak once again. I'm going by this building. I just... I think that you should have people and stories that are, I mean, not just different, but like you should come out, you know, completely changed. I just think that's just good storytelling. I think a lot of the smart people figure that out. That's why shows like Breaking Bad have done so well, The Sopranos, uh, The Wire, <laughs> you know, we're talking about they took time to tell the story they needed to tell. And you've got to stick with them too. That's the other part. You've got to make it interesting enough that people want to stick with you. And I don't think that all the adventures you see that are done are of that quality. I think it's just like, okay, put it out. Kill monster, get treasure, let's go. Kill monster, get treasure, let's go. And, you know, I wish that people would try different types of adventures. It'd still be cool adventures, but not what you atypically think. I mean, do a murder mystery, but like have 50 to 75% of the stuff happen in the courtroom. Do some Law & Order stuff, make it that. And still you got characters who aren't always the fighting ones. There will be fighting, of course. And there will be, of course, there's always fighting. But you can also make it different. You can give it a different feel to it, a different look to it. I think that's a smart idea. And I think more people might want to start trying to do that just for the sake of uh, just doing to do cooler stuff. At least that's what I think, you know. But I, you know, I, I think that, you know, Pathfinder Society, Living City, Living Greyhawk, I think they all have a good basis of ideas. I just think it can go even further. And, you know, one of the things that we were talking about with some guys at the local store, you know, you know, and this really came down to the biggest problem is being that I've noticed is getting people, all right, stop. Let me just put my vision out there so you guys can understand. I want people to play, of course. I want them to enjoy playing, of course. I want them to have a great time playing, of course. What I also want them to do is record the information and go online to record it. Now, you get to search the table, of course. That's the standard. That's how it's done. But also, I want you to go online. Tell me that you played the adventure. Give me some questions. Some questions. Like maybe five, maybe six questions. That's going to help move the storyline along. So you, as a player, get to affect the storyline which is important let's just call it like it is that's important most people don't want to want to do that they want to just play and go but i want you to affect the storyline i want you to be into the story and that's one way we do it so that being said you go online you put your information in the going online part is what i think is gonna be the tough thing to get people on on board for but some people are like well i don't want to go online i'm like look you don't have to go online you don't have to information i get it you may not feel like it, you may not want to no problem but if you do go online and you do find some stuff and say so you do answer the questions when you finish it we're going to send you a little note saying hey thank you so much for doing this one here's a free blank blank for your character to use in the game now what the blank is i thought weapon i thought favor i thought it could be really anything it's 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 Whatever the MacGuffin is, it could be some cool thing that they have that's unique because they took the time out to do something cool. Now, not everybody can do that. But say, well, I live far away. Not, that's right. Not everybody's going to do it. But the people that do, you're going to get something nice from it. I just think it's it, 
it's something nice to do. They didn't, I mean, people don't have to go do it, but I appreciate it very much when they do because we take that information they give us and it helps us make a better system. And that's really what we're doing here. We're trying to make the best system possible, the easiest to use, the most fun. And let me just be honest, I'm not Paizo. Maybe you didn't know. Maybe you didn't notice from my massively awesome threads I've got. My big fat chain I'm wearing. You know, I'm not Paizo. We don't have that kind of money. So we have to think about ways to do things on a very, very low, low budget. And one of the things that I know I've been thinking about talking about is that, yes, we're going to build this system up. Oh, this tree looks a little dead. Yes, we're going to build this system up. But at the same time, oh, we've got to get this system relatively cheap. Uh oh, watch it. One of my coworkers, I'm like, harass. Where are you going? I see you going to lunch. Yeah. Are you bringing me back anything? Um, you know, that's not Christian. Like, that's very not Christian. I really, I'm kind of offended by that. Jeez, people, people going to lunch not taking me. I mean, I'm doing my show, it's much better anyway. But still, it's just the point of the matter. So, yeah, so I think that people can do, hmm, what is that for? I think people can do awesome awesome adventures get people into it get them response and then we can tailor made adventures for them somebody drove by I didn't know to smile I think that to me is the coolest part possible you know adding those cool pieces getting I mean let's look if in a game where the decision becomes you save this girl you don't save this girl what are the repercussions if you don't save this girl well this 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 happened here's the kicker or at least in my mind. I think you do that version, blah, 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 blah. then maybe you put out some adventures where you do the version where you did the exact opposite, where the girl lives and this person does that. I think that could be some awesome stuff. I think those could be cool. Like, like, look, Marvel's What If and DC's Elseworld stories are great ideas. It's simple. <laughs> you know, what if this happened? And you can tell some great stories that way. And maybe it's just, it's just what it is. It's a story, you play it out, it's, it's for fun. It's but I think people just like to do it. So, that's an option. You know, there's so many... This this whole living campaign has got me kind of like this, this living... I don't even, know, I'm even gonna call it living campaign. I'm calling it something. You know, I've been calling it living OGL in my notes, but... That's not what it's gonna be called. Because, I mean, it's, it's more than just that. Uh, you know, I, I want the system to be there for anybody who's a third-party guy who wants to come in and say, Hey, I want to add my world to what you're doing... I want to find out how I can get attached. And really, it's something very simple. We can say, okay, here's the format sheet that you need to fill. Well, here's the big book you need to do. You need to supply with this. You also need to have XYZ Adventures already done before you can join. Because let's just be honest. If there's one adventure done or two, people will be like, yeah, it's great, too. And you'll never see any more. I want you to have like three or four ready. So when you come, people will be like, wow, you know, they already got four adventures out. So they're serious. So you can get the response. People can see what's going on. And that's also, also the other part. The, the tech behind it is going to help the game companies learn more about their customers and what the customers are like. But let's be honest. The feedback that they'll give, did you like this, did you like that, da 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 It's a smart idea. So you as a, I mean, because some people, some people are like, oh, okay, we like your adventures, but we like them to have more action or less action, or I wish you'd do more of this. It gives us great information that we can use to scale and get everything together as it should. I just think it's an option that should be available to everybody who wants to do this. And let's be honest, um, it's expensive. And we got to find somebody to do it. Like I said, we probably do it inexpensively. We also are possibly, even though I don't want to say it like this, but I'm going to say it in advance, we might have to do a Kickstarter for it. Ugh. We might. We might have to kickstart it. It's a possibility. So, ooh, much cooler in my office. Oh, oh, my connection's weak. Oh, of course, I'm going. I went inside. Um, I'm hoping we don't get cut off. If we get cut off, I'm sorry, but like I said, I really would not find a way that we can get a lot of the third party guys. Okay, I just changed it. I'm hoping this is a little more stable, but it may not be, so we might cut out again, so don't be surprised. But I'm really just trying to find a way to get the third party guys involved on the team, getting them to see what we have planned, and, and really getting them their support. Because I, I, I think there's a lot of good third party guys doing amazing stuff, and there's some smaller guys who want to become bigger, 
And really, it's about reaching out and meeting people and doing that. I think that's the main thing we have to do. We have to find some way to do that. And I think the easiest way to do that is, you know, let's let's do this. The living thing can be great for everybody involved, and it doesn't have to be uh, this guy over that guy. It can be all about, hey, let's work together. Let's find a way that we can team up and work together. Now, that being said, not everybody wants to play in every third-party sandbox. Some people want to play with this guy. Some play with that guy. That's why I said that's great. That's what we're building this is having a generic setting and finding ways to get you to play in very specific worlds. And, you know, the more popular the world is, the more stuff they can put out, the more stuff you can play in, the more fun you can have. And that's just, I mean, that's what we're all trying to do. We're trying to have a good time for everybody. It's just a thought process. Okay, nothing emergency burning. That's a mess burning in my computer. But, yeah, I think that we can do this as a team, as everybody involved. And really, the if, if done right, everybody can be left to their own devices. Once everybody makes their campaign book and gets that out, after that point, it's just picking, you know, how many adventures you want to write. You can, if you want to do two, let's just, let's just say, I'll just use Dreams Card since they're off the top of my head. Say Dreams Card says, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to sign up a porter and get this all this thing set up. And we're going to do like 20 adventures a year. Well, we at, you know, living OGL, we might only do like 10 a year. So now you have 30 adventures. Well, you know, 60, 66% of them will be for Dreams Card. There are, there's some fans who'll be very happy about that. At the same time, you still get 10 more adventures you could play, very generic, and you can customize them as you need to, but very generic into that, and, and it should be that way. You know, you add on, you know, you add on New Exodus, you add on other people's, you know, you can add on other worlds to this to make this much bigger than anyone ever expected. But best of all, getting people to play in different settings, to use different things and see cooler things. Because it seems like I put a post on Facebook about, you know, what people thought about um, Pathfinder Society and what they didn't like. And the thing that keeps popping up to me that was surprising to me that people didn't, they wanted more races to play. And I was like, wow, I didn't think that would be such a big deal. But I guess it is. You know, people are kind of tired of that. They're kind of the, this kind of races and this is what I got up. This is my little box. So I think there's ways to get around that. I think there's ways to do some awesome stuff. And, you know, I, you know, I think if done right, everyone will be happy. But like everything, this takes time. So my plan is to... At least at a minimum, we're going to do a minor release, get the system set up, how it's done, how it should work, um, how people can sign on, even maybe even how stores can get involved. But that's something That's something else also. I think it's important to stores to get involved with this. Getting stores involved with this will help us, you know, really ratchet up. Plus, it gives stores a reason to purchase third-party stuff. You know, if people are playing, if people are playing Dreams Card Press in their store, and they go to the store and go, this is some great stuff, do you have any of their books? Starting to, you don't want the store to go, oh, no, I don't have anything. I can't do anything. You want them to say, yes, I got these books right over here that you can buy for this game that you're playing. Oh, great, awesome. Do you know some other third-party stuff that's good? Well, I got a whole lot of full, you know, and then people get excited. You know, it's, it's if 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 you didn't know, maybe some people don't know, I mean, Pathfinder Society at its core is kind of like a marketing arm of a company. It really is like your street team. It's, it's there to get people interested in what you're playing and getting them, you know, as fans and getting them interested and also solving their issue of when they're playing, what kind of problems they're having. You know, they could drop this anywhere. They can go to any con. They're going to be playing this everywhere. So you can bring your character over and play and have a good time. That's kind of what we want to do. We want to give you that feeling. All right, I'm going to go because I have more work to do. But like I said, it's just some stuff to think about, some stuff to think together. I know I need to shave too. Wow, I really need to shave. But I'll deal with that later. All right, as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you all later.